Hi, everybody. Welcome to Pencilless Animation Studios. We're having a lot of fun today. We're going to do a collab on character design and kind of share our own stories. So what we're going to do today is we're going to draw each other's characters and actually redesign each other's characters. Are you, are you scared? I'm a little scared. I'm, you know, the amount of time that we have to do this and knowing how long you no doubt put <laughs> the time you put into designing your characters, there's no way I can't just, you know, well, come up and with it, something. <laughs> but it's a good point. You did the same. It's not like you just did one version of your character. You've been down a few sure. roads already. And so I'm just to now jump on and, and make improvements on something that you've worked a lot, put a lot of time into. So we are going to do different versions of these characters. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about, I'll start with my show that you're doing some redesigns on is called uh, Bjorn the Last Unicorn. And it's a story of Bjorn, this the last unicorn. He lives up in the Alps and he's been hiding uh, for thousands of years because he has decided, though, that he's bored and he wants to come out and finally go into the world. About that time, he discovers a cell phone and the world of the Internet. And being as naive and, and positive as he is, he's untouched and unsoiled by the world. <laughs> He sees the internet as pure and wonderful and exciting. And so yeah. he decides, I got to be a social media influencer. That way I could spread joy to the world like all other so social media influencers. Right. So he meets Becca, who is his new momager and best friend. And he moves in with her. Becca's already uh, managing Patty, the world's number one pet influencer, mm. Patty the cat. Yeah. And so immediately there's this sort of war within uh with and a love hate relationship between patty and um and bjorn and then of course uh right stuck in the middle is becca so it's a really fun uh trio of characters and of course uh everybody uh who wouldn't want to follow on instagram or somewhere else uh the world's first talking unicorn that also right, is exactly really cute yeah. so he takes off right away and, and dethrones <laughs> patty um and then, so yeah, you describe your uh, your story and the character I'm about to draw. Yeah, so Tom is going to be uh, working on redesigning uh, Biko, the main character of uh, my uh, p animated pilot and and series I'm working on called Stormfellers. Stormfellers takes place on an island that's beset by these sort of monstrous storms that emerge from the center of the island, and all of the people that live on it need to sort of push out to the outer mountain. Uh, regions just for safety, and so they they establish a guild of uh, they're called storm fellers. They're they're a team that goes out and fells these storms and makes it safe for people to live there. Biko is actually the medic. He's the the healer. He's made of this sort of green healing goo, and he sort of heals of himself through these little gauntlets that he's wearing. Uh, mm -hmm. And so usually that would be a background character or a secondary character as the support, but. Biko's sort of our, our main focus. He's very underappreciated by the rest of his team, sort of taken for granted. And so that's kind of some of the, the workplace dynamics and things that, that go into the story. Awesome, great. Uh, I'm looking at your design, um, and really how I'm gonna approach this is um, pushing your design. <laughs> the key to me oftentimes is looking for even areas. And so usually you yeah. want uh, anything that's like a medium shape, I want to make it smaller or larger. That's kind of how I say that's a one way to push a design. Yeah, there's been a, a thought I've had towards making him a little bit um, bigger or heavier set, sort of in that, that middle section. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to seeing what you got. So if you like it, will you redo everything you've done? Absolutely. I think that's really... <laughs> <laughs> I think that's feasible, you know? That's the danger here, is that you, <laughs> if you redesign Becca and everybody likes it better, they're going to be like, Tom, why <laughs> oh, aren't no. you changing it completely? So is he, uh, your character, uh, Biko, is he kind of a worry war? To, like, what would his personality be? A little bit. A little bit of a people pleaser, a little bit of a just not understood or taken. You know, as, as the story goes on, there's a little bit more of a... Uh, a bit of reasoning that you understand from the other side, from the rest of his team, but the way that he's treated obviously is unfair. So how's the process been for you creating, uh, animating on, uh, sort of, not on your own, but independently, like how's it, how's it gone? 
It's going well. So yeah, Pencilish Animation Studio, as you mentioned, it, it is crowd invested. So the nice thing is, is that we have some upfront funding and that what that gives us is some, some, a, a good start, right? To start yeah. making actual animation, not just uh, doing pitch packets and stuff like that. Right. And then, you know, hopefully you have that, then that way those our investors get to see a return on that investment. They own part of that, right? So nice. Absolutely. So yeah, we already have uh, two episodes of Bjorn, The Last Unicorn, already up, and then we have one more about to release. So yeah, uh, the third one is in production right now. That's great. Yeah, I, I like the. I, I just especially the way that certain industry things are like either going belly up or being really sort of chaotic, despite you know how much animation was able to carry over the pandemic work wise mm -hmm. it just kind of it, it all kind of motivates me to sort of just be like yeah I'm, I'm as much as possible it's not everyone the position everyone can be in for sure mm -hmm. and i i take it as a privilege to be able to produce something independently but at the same time i i feel it as a sort of either imperative or you know uh better than the alternative of trying to sort of bring it into you know traditional studio environments just because I, I see what happens to a showrunner who you know made something for three years it's not even canceled but it's just deleted all the way off of a, a streaming service and it's like well what do you have to show for yourself after that you know not only from a financial standpoint but just from a you know what happens <laughs> When no, you, it, you're you're totally right. I mean, and then on top of that, you're making their show, right? So if they yeah. if they fund it, the big studios, if they're funding it, then they also have control over it, and they get to say, "Oh no, we don't like that." Uh, how about that guy that you thought was the main character, that Biko? Well, you know, he feels like a a behind the scenes kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Let's sure. play up this other character, and you're like, no, no, that's the whole point. And they, we and see it as a buddy cop story. I'm like, what? Uh, huh? Yeah, yeah they're <laughs> like, you know, that main character that's a unicorn. Can you make it a dog? You know, and right. then all of a sudden, you're like, no, that's not what I'm doing. I'm, yeah, I did this on purpose. You know, so I, I love that you're making your independent show. It's not very different from what we're doing. Where, where are you on, on the on the road of that? Are you you already have voice actors and stuff? I do, and I, I have yet to announce them, and it, it pains me a little bit because it's. It, I'm very excited about who it is. Um, that's great. Yeah, definitely more belly, a little more, it's a little bit of a flip. It's like secondary ear shape there, or a hat hat shape. Yeah, that's the hat uh, back okay. there. And so I'm trying to do the side view. I'm trying to make a little bit bigger statement with that little hair piece. So make mm -hmm. it a little bit small. And I love that you did shape-wise, a little small piece and a big piece. Uh, that's really good design. How did uh, how'd things go for you at, at Lightbox? I think that's where we initially connected. It, it was great. I mean, yeah. it was just a phenomenal show. And yeah. this one, it was like every single booth had absolutely just the best of the best it felt like yeah just a crazy energy i agree it's like yeah every everyone's doing exactly it's it's not like oh they're they're doing art but it's sort of in a different realm like it's all you know animation art it's all mm -hmm. sort of this stylized stuff it's, and it's concept really art mm -hmm. for, for feature films and things like that it was yeah. just amazing yeah, let me zoom in on this. This is kind of this was the original side view uh, of Biko, um, and then this is where I'm headed. And so, hopefully, you can see. Not only have I made him a little bit taller, but mostly kind of lengthening his body, um, but also trying to get a little bit more ins and outs, a little bit more on the side view, so that we have kind of nice negative shapes. If you look at the silhouette. Um, I love it. It's definitely if I if it was ever a an '80s animated show or something like it's definitely <laughs> yeah. There's like a a universe where this is exactly how he looks. Uh -huh. So what are you? What's your thought process as you're doing that? You know, it's uh, it's less uh, intensive as yours, I think. Um, mainly, I'm trying to find sort of. I I know we know a little bit about the character, but it's also something of a challenge from the standpoint of she's sort of the, mm -hmm. you know, 
uh, personality driven main character so i'm is it a betrayal to kind of like exaggerate towards something or or present something you know larger than life yeah i didn't see uh the word betrayal popping up uh, <laughs> in this character design challenge I think something that's important for a lot of creative people is to not just work on something that you want the final idea of or the final product of, but also mm -hmm. something that you actually enjoy the, the act of doing. Because if it's, I mean, there's, a, there's enough inborn agony in creative work as it is at certain points. Or inbred. Um, inbred, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that you, you know, you might as well, like enjoy the 3d modeling or the animating or the the mm. storyboarding you know like you have an idea for a video game but it's like gonna take this much and you're you have absolutely no starting point mm -hmm. i feel like finding the thing that you enjoy doing is just as important as as the ideas for sure i love that follow your heart <laughs> that's what I in just so heard. many words that's what I was trying that's all yeah. I was trying to say yeah thank you this is great For behind the scenes this is uh, you know a little early in the morning this feels like the warm up for me of, <laughs> of drawing and we're getting there with a cold a cold bucket of water I think <laughs> it, is a, it is a cold bucket of water. I agree. <laughs> yeah, just for everybody watching, we ju we did not do any pre sketching. We did not do any very little conversation ahead of time either. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is clear. I don't know. <laughs> but I think I've been uh, something I, I tend to do when I'm sort of recreating or sketching. I end up doing it piece by piece when. So oh, you're saying you kind of dug into details too soon? I, I you know what? It's it's kind of interesting to note that though that you know, no matter how long you've been doing it, it's so <laughs> easy to do that, right? Uh, it it is. I do it all the time myself and I'm like, "Wait, why am I drawing pupils and highlights right now?" <laughs> right. Know? I find that with streaming especially is it's kind of its own thing where I'm like, "Well, I I need to show them something good as soon as possible." And yes, that's sort of uh, eating the t tail Ouroboros style of uh, the quality, I think. Sometimes. Wow, I didn't see Ouroboros being part of it <laughs> today either. <laughs> You're just throwing out the words. I love it. Yeah, the uh, the drawover was probably a, a good idea, I think. Instead of the yeah, whole you know, it's the way I teach. I, I've been doing it for years. It's also the way I was taught. So when I was at Disney... Yeah. That's kind of what the animator would do that you were being mentored was he, he or she would stick a piece of paper over, this is back when it was pencil and paper, yeah. over your drawing and then refine it, like make it look better. Right. Um, and that had to do with animation sometimes. And then sometimes it had to do with, um, you know, character design or something like that too. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is my, uh, my lineup, my before and after awesome of the two oh, two man, different angles it. yeah and yeah. I left off the backpack I think your backpack's well designed I, I didn't feel like I needed to do anything to that <laughs> anyway thank you that uh, looks great I love I love uh, the sort of collar cowl shape is like a it's own little vest it looks kind of like a either security vest or something like kind of tight it's so great yeah I'll go larger because I can see on the screen <laughs> it's kind of small but yeah oh, that's uh, awesome Whoops. It, it never gets old seeing, you know, the characters you made drawn by somebody else. All right. Awesome. I love the tiny little feet. That's a really cool thing. <laughs> yeah. I love the Big proportions. Tiny feet. Yeah. Proportions on the right is really fun. So now oh, you just yeah. did something. I want to note this to everybody. You flop the drawing to make sure and check it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's actually, I kind of drew it in this direction first and then it ended up over there. So because just a, that, a way but especially. But it works. Like, I haven't done yeah. that with my drawing yet. And I must admit, I forget to do that all the time. It's a great tip and trick. But hopefully your most hardcore Becca fans will not uh, come after me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. She's still lovely. You kept that. Uh, that's a lot of fun. And by the way, this is voiced by 
Susan Egan does the voice of Becca, and she's the Got voice it. of Meg in Hercules. Uh, and oh, wow. was the original Be- uh, Belle on, on Broadway for Beauty and the Beast. That's fantastic. That's really cool. I see yeah. the uh, the color uh, hints to to Meg. Yeah, and the hair cool. too. We we actually did kind of design her around Susan uh, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, uh, yeah. There's awesome. there's your momager <laughs> for better or for worse. Momager. All right. So let's show mine one more time. That's awesome. I love it. We designed each other's OCs, everybody. Wow. 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 I think we got we a can... title for this video. <laughs> it's perfect. Thank you, Brooks. This is awesome. Thank you, Tom. It's a pleasure. Be sure to subscribe to the Pencilish Studios YouTube channel.